simplifying algebraic expressions involving exponents. And in the first example, we're asked to find the ratio of the surface area of the top of a cone, which is this part right here, to the area of the bottom. Now, the formula for the area of the top of the cone is pi r s. This is also called the lateral surface area. Um, if you think of this as an ice cream cone, it's the part that you hold. That's the pi r s. Now, s is the slant height, r is the radius of the cone, and the uh, figure on the bottom, of course, is a circle, so its area is pi r squared. So we're asked to find the ratio of these two areas, so it's the ratio of pi r s to pi r squared, and this ratio will simplify considerably. First of all, the pi's will divide out, and the r in the numerator will divide into the r squared in the denominator, leaving an r in the denominator, and so the ratio simplifies to s over r. So the ratio of the area of the top of the cone to the circle area in the bottom of the cone is actually just the ratio of the slant height to the radius. Example number two, we're asked to simplify these two expressions. So in A, the first thing I would do is evaluate these two powers. So three squared is nine. X to the negative two to the power of two. Remember when you have the power of a power, you multiply the exponent. So negative two times two is negative four. And four times two is this eight. So Y to the eighth on the end. In the denominator, we're going to cube everything in here. There's a negative one coefficient. Negative one cubed is negative one. Hence the negative is still there. Uh, x cubed cubed, 3 times 3 is 9, and negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Now we need to simplify this. We're dividing the monomial on the top by the monomial in the denominator. And so 9 divided by negative 1 is negative 9. The larger power of x is in the denominator, and so we would subtract in this order 9 take away negative 4. And so since I started with the 9 in the denominator exponent, uh, the power of x will stay in the denominator. If I had gone negative 4, take away 9 to get negative 13 for the power for x, that would mean that that power of x would stay in the top, in the numerator. Now, lastly, I realized that the larger power of y is in the numerator, so I would subtract 8, take away negative 6, which is the same as 8 plus 6, and so that's 14, so y to the 14th in the numerator. For B, the first thing that I would think about is, uh, to simplify this, I'm going to multiply these two powers of A in the numerator. And so they both have the same base, so I can simplify it into one power by adding the exponents. And so I would start with the 3n plus 4n is 7n, and negative 2 and 5 add to 3. Now I'm dividing, remember that's what this horizontal line means, and dividing these, and their powers are the same base, so I would subtract the exponents. So 7n take away 2n is 5n, and 3 take away 2 is 1, so a to the 5n plus 1 is what that would simplify to. That is the simplest form of this original expression. On the second page, example 3, we're asked to simplify the following. Now we have rational exponents here. And remember, those mean roots. Power of a third means the cube root. Power of one-fifth means the fifth root. So in the numerator, I start with uh, 64 to the power of a third means the cube root of 64. And I have x to the negative 6 to the power of a third. Power of a power, you multiply the exponent. So negative 6 times a third is negative 2. It's also the same as negative 6 divided by 3 to give me negative 2. Uh, 12 times a third is 4. In the denominator, the 1 fifth exponent means 32 to the 1 fifth is the fifth root of 32. Uh, negative 20 times a fifth is negative 4, or negative 20 divided by 5 is negative 4. And 25 times a fifth is 5, or 25 divided by 5 is 5. Now, simplifying that still more, we have the cube root of 64 in the numerator. The cube root of 64 is 4. And the fifth root of 32 is 2. Now, largest power of x is in the numerator, so I will go negative 2, subtract negative 4. Remember, negative 2 is a larger integer than negative 4. Okay, remember the negative numbers here. So negative 2 minus negative 4 is the same as negative 2 plus 4, so it's, that's 2, so x squared in the numerator. And larger power of y is in the denominator. 5 take away 4 is 1, so y to the first power in the denominator. Now, I do have coefficients that have a common 
divisor. 4 divides by 2 evenly, and so this will simplify to 2x squared over y. For b, what we're going to do is write this as just one single radical in the end. And so the first thing I would think about doing is writing the two radicals as powers. The cube root of x squared is x to the 2 thirds. Remember the power is the numerator in that rational exponent and the root is the denominator. And the same with the 6 root of x to the 5th. It would be x to the 5 6 Now the next thing I would do is I would take that numerator expression. It's the power of a power. So I simplify into one single power by multiplying the exponent. So 2 thirds times 5 is 10 thirds. 2 times 5 is this 10. The denominator of the 5 is 1, so 1 times 3 is that 3. Now, to divide these powers of x, I need to subtract the exponents. And right now, their denominators are not the same, so I need a common denominator. The common denominator between 3 and 6 is 6. So I would multiply the 10 thirds top and bottom by 2. So 10 thirds would become 20 sixths. And now I can divide these, so I divide by subtracting the exponents. 26 minus 5 6 is 15 6. And I can simplify that rational exponent. 15 6, both 15 and 6, divide evenly by 3. So 15 divided by 3 is 5, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. So to write this finally as a radical, it would be the square root. Remember the denominator 2 here means the square root and the 5 means the power of 5, so the square root of x to the 5th.